the Turkey-Israel relations uh, started pretty much, uh, the catalyst was the uh, uh, Mama, and that happened on 31st of May of last year. Uh, the flotilla attempted to cross Israeli uh, naval blockade of, the Gaza, of Gaza, and uh, Israeli uh, naval commanders attempted to seize one of the vessels, and in the attempt, nine activists were killed, seven, seven of those being uh, Turkish uh, nationalists. And the incident, like I said, served as a catalyst for Turkish-Israeli conflict within the region. There was a UN report, a uh, panel of inquiry, and the findings, uh, they, the findings were that the naval blockade was imposed as a legitimate, a legitimate security measure, and it complied with the requirements of international law. However, they did say the flotilla acted recklessly in attempting to breach the naval blockade, and they said that Israel's actions were excessive and unreasonable, and they also, uh, the findings said that a statement of regret should be made by Israel and reparations paid to the families of the deceased and injured victims. And uh, above all, Turkey and Israel should resume the diplomatic relations. The <coughs> Turkish Prime Minister, Erdogan, his uh, reply to these findings were, uh, he, just, he declared them null and void. However, he still uh, demanded a full apology, which Israel has yet to apologize. Uh, accused Israel of committing state terror his actions on the Gaza flotilla, Israel's actions on the Gaza flotilla were a, quote, cause for war, and then announced that uh, Turkey was scored ships carrying into Palestine. So now we're going to have more flotillas going through, and Turkey's going to uh, go ahead and escort those with uh, the Turkish uh, name. Uh, they recalled the Turkish ambassador to Israel, suspended military and military trade agreements, and uh, these comments run concurrent with the Prime Minister's comments on Cyprus drilling, which we'll look at next. So this month, the Turkish Prime Minister said uh, Ankara was ready to deploy its navy in the dispute over the naval blockade and nobles drilling of Block 12. Cyprus fell under the same warning due to Turkey's uh, pro protesting uh, nobles drilling and possible cooperation with Israel, whose rights to offshore reserves Turkey still calls into question. Erdogan threatened to attack Cyprus, an EU member state, if drilling in Block 12 uh, by uh, noble would uh, indeed uh, commence a schedule. Cyprus, Greece, and the EU all issued statements condemning uh, Turkey's naval action threats. The EU, EU Energy Commissioner warned that such action could hamper the peaceful settlement of the border dispute in Cyprus. And Greece stood committed to Cyprus's security, stating that uh, any attack on Cyprus would be considered an attack on Greece. President of Cyprus condemned the Turkish Prime Minister. President of Cyprus condemned the Turkish Prime Minister of threats and announced plans to exercise, to exercise Cyprus' sovereign rights by beginning drilling. And as you all know, the rig was placed on the 18th of September, this past Sunday. Turkish ships and aircraft observed. However, they didn't violate Cyprus and Israeli territorial waters or airspace. But at the same time, Israel, Israeli missile ships and drones kept a watch over the rig movement and track uh, Turkish surveillance. So, in response to the drill be, uh, being placed, the energy minister of Turkey called for uh, Greek Cypriots <coughs> to halt gas exploration. Um, he then announced plans between Turkey and uh, Turkey, Turkish Cyprus setting out maritime boundaries. This would result in a Turkish uh, rig being placed in waters off coast of northern Cyprus by P Turkish Petroleum Corporation, and they said that they would be able to start uh, drilling as of 26 September, in about six days. It remains to see, be seen uh, what their capabilities are um, if they can go ahead and, and conduct this drilling on their own without any extra help. And preliminary findings haven't really shown a great amount of hydrocarbon resources north of Cyprus. Um, he warned again that Turkish naval ships would escort the uh, drilling operation. So, again, the Prime Minister of Turkey said if Greek separates began drilling, Turkey and Northern Cyprus would uh, retaliate by signing a, a continental shelf elimination accord to pave the way for their own ex exploration. Um, again, oh, we've heard these statements before, but he said that Turkey will freeze EU relations when Cyprus is scheduled to take over the EU presidency. And then he said the main crisis will be between the EU and Turkey. Um, some reports have uh, reported that Tur Turkish troop reinforcements uh, have landed in northern Cyprus along with drilling equipment. 
And uh, reports have claimed that Turkey has 17 warships in the Aegean moving between the uh, roads in Castellarizo. And those ships include three frigates, seven Corvette gunships, and seven Puerto gunboats. Uh, Senator Clinton just made a statement uh, either today or yesterday, and uh, pretty much uh, backing Cyprus, and Cyprus has received support in this matter from Russia, the EU, and the US. And with that, I will turn it over to our main speaker. Thank you. Thank you. However, we are not certain whether they possess 
mass destruction weapons so far. In any case, this is something worrying Israel very much, and that's why the anti-ballistic defense project in Eastern Mediterranean has a center in the protection of Israel. Now, Turkey, no matter that in hostile terms with Israel, continues uh, to participate to that project as deeply as possible. I have to mention that uh, so far, to maintain an efficient anti-ballistic capability in Eastern Mediterranean, the U.S. Navy has nine ships on rotation patrolling. So it seems that by two land bases, one in Turkey and another one, I don't know where, they may reduce these ships to three. So it's interesting for them. And I'm sure that the Turks, when agreeing to facilitate this great love, they, they are going to ask something in return. They are always do. Now, it seems that uh, the relations between Greece and Turkey have improved. Uh, however, this to me appears just on the surface. Turkey feels strong militarily, and uh, for that reason, doesn't pay as much attention. On the other hand, they continue to have the violations of the airspace and of the FIA of Athens almost every day. They just had a week's break during the Ramadan celebrations. Now, on the other hand, we have a, complete, a completely new geopolitical situation, which is a situation around this right, with the so-called uh, Arabic Spring. Uh, it seems uh, that Israel should reevaluate completely its doctrine and its strategic priorities. Egypt is in a transition period. Uh, there is political instability, and uh, there are the so-called anti-Sionistic feelings of the Egyptian population coming to surface. We had many examples of that recently. So after almost 30 years, Israel should start to worry about its southern borders, should start to worry about uh, Palestinians in Gaza Strip receiving aid from Egypt, etc. And they still have the problem of the Hezbollah in the north. And Hezbollah proved to be quite strong recently. Now, the diplomatic field in a few days in Israel has to face the effort of the Palestinians to be accepted as a member of the United Nations. We may expect that in the General Assembly of the International Organization, Turkey will try to take the lead of the Islamic countries which will gather to support Mahmoud Abbas in his effort. Uh, and in the middle of this situation, Cyprus is going through one of its worst periods uh, politically after the tragic explosion at the Florida's naval base. But at the same time, there is a quite instability in the financial side because the Cypriot banking system is quite close connection, closely connected with the shrinking economy of Greece. Uh, also, for some years, the defense spending in Cyprus had been dramatically reduced as well as it was the training of the personnel. Uh, and there is always the problem of the UN sponsored talks, which may uh, present additional diplomatic problems. Greece, on the other hand, appears to rely exclusively on the diplomatic efforts and the so-called international <coughs> community to support her case. A few days ago, after a meeting of the ministers of defense of Greece and Cyprus, the Greek minister, Panos de Gritis, stressed that Greece stands to, uh, to respect the international legislation and agreements, created a strong front of solidarity with the countries of the EU, the USA, countries of Eastern Mediterranean, the Russian, and the international organization, organizations. That's, uh, that's where exactly his words. 
Yeah, maybe, but he hopes the Turkish administration will see the reality formed by the international legislation. Apart from that, this government of this, as well as the previous one, undermined the efficiency of the armed forces as well as the morale of the personnel. Uh, as about the doctrine of the unified defense space between Greece and Turkey, 